Thank you. Whoever you are. Oh, funny boy. Seriously, no, really, I mean it. I mean it. <laughs> I'm telling you, bud, let's not get carried away here. Oh, I uh, sense of humor. I'm the one of them. Can I just say something here? It is kind of English thing. Jing is a crab and help on my boat, eh? Sorry, do apologize. Such a simple word. F O F O U F O U T B A W L Football. To the rest of the world, it's the beautiful game, a mere sport. To us, it's a national obsession that rules our heads, our hearts, our bladders. And after a long, 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 close season of utter emptiness, we're now so desperate for our footballing fix that we've reached the stage where we'll listen to anybody talking about football. And I mean anybody. <laughs> yes, this is me, Chick Young, standing where I am, which is here quite literally on the brink of the edge of the bit that comes after the season has started. And of course, I, like all other True Blues, uh, I mean, uh, True Fans, am literally wetting my Broxy Bear boxes with total anticipation of what's about to unfold. And so I'll bet is Tommy Burns. Uh, this is uh, very, very untrue, Chick. Because uh, I, I don't wear Broxy Bear boxers. But uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to the, the new season, especially after last season was such a, a, a pure stunner for, for anyone associated with the Celtic Football Club, uh, whether they be players, fans, or the wee boys outside Celtic Park that say, can I watch your motor, mister? But uh, time passes, wounds heal, even deep, painful wounds. And I, I personally took my mind off all the, the unjust defeats suffered by the hoops by going to see some of the great gigs that took place in Scotland this summer, like your, like your Bon Jovi, your Robbie Williams, and my own personal favourite, uh, M and M. Hi, Jim White here, and cheers, Tommy. What a load of pish. Now, we really must mention Celtic's UEFA Cup campaign that promised so much, but in the end yielded hee-haw. All you can say is, brilliant, wasn't it? One thing's for sure, Celtic will be up for it this season, but will their campaign once again end in total gut-wrenching, book-inducing, humiliating, soul-destroying disaster. Let's hope so. Charlie, mate, did you want to come in there, amigo? And definitely so, James. This speaks volumes for itself in spades. It's time, celtically speaking, to let sleeping dogs be bygones, grasp the nettle and look forward to the present and the challenges ahead. Because Rangers-wise, both quarters of the old firm will be looking to make progress in the European parts of Europe. Well, as far as your domesticals go, your Championship, your Scottish Cup, your We Diddy Cup, 
Rangers will want to solidify their grip, while Celtic will be looking to win, if not the treble, then certainly all three. I'd be interested to hear Ken Douglas's thoughts on that. What does Ken Douglas think? You need to ask Ken Douglas. Then again, I am Ken Douglas. So, who better to know what Ken Douglas is thinking than Ken Douglas? So, in answer to the question, what does Ken Douglas think? Next time I'm talking to Ken Douglas, then Ken Douglas will ask him. Now, if you want an explanation to what I've just said, don't ask me. Ask Dennis Law. Yes, Kenny Douglas. Quite possibly the second best player Scotland ever produced. And you know, as you say, I hear what Kenny's saying. Mm. And what's even more alarming, I understand what he's saying too. But for the benefit of those of you who haven't played at the, at the highest level and, and can't make head and tail of any of this, then what Kenny was trying to say was that when you've played for the, for the Manchester United of this world, you know, like, like I did, you know, when I was at Torino, Ooh, what a team they were. Full of household names, you know. They, they had me, they had Joe Baker, they had... Well, you know, they, they had a lot of players from Italy, you know, with Italian names. And the thing you always remember, you know, the thing you never forget is... Sorry, what were we talking about again? Oh, that's right, yeah. Sir Alex Ferguson. I wonder how he feels about picking up all those Euros for the boy Beckham, hmm? Oh, proud. Very proud. Uh, don't get me wrong, though. I'm, uh, I'm pretty perplexed, too, because I always thought David Beckham was a, was a fabulous player until he met that bloody stupid wife of his. I says to Victoria, who do you think in Real Madrid? She says, well... They're much better than artificial Madrid any day. And this is, a, this is the same real lassie who once swallowed a Malteser whole. Thought she was pregnant. So, another season of drama, excitement, my nose getting even more purple, and boots getting lobbed about dressing rooms is about to unfold. Would I change it? Well, funnily enough, just the other day, somebody says to me, Alex, despite the unparalleled success, the, the millionaire lifestyle, the horse. Do I sometimes wish I was back up at Pataudry? And I just look at them and say, I oh, that'll be shining bright. And all the same, I, I think Stuart Milne would take me back in a minute. Oh I fit like up here at Bouncy Castle Pataudry here in Aberdeen, we're really looking forward to the new season. Although I can't for the life of me think why. How do you feel about your team, Jim McLean? Well, Ian McCall's brought a lot of decent players to Tannadice. He spent a lot of money. He even installed a sunbed to lure Derek McInnes, the Tommy Sheridan of Scottish football. So things are looking up for Dundee United, which makes me happy. And as there's nothing makes me more miserable than being happy, then I'm delighted. Jings are crevins, help him a bob. It's a me, a Claudio Canigia, and what a season for my favourite old team, Dundee. They must be fair puggled. But you can, there's more to fit more than winning. There's putting a smile in the punters' faces, and last season Dundee make loads of people smile, especially Lee Wilkie. Every time he play, everybody push themselves laughing. Even, even John Lambie is a wee chuckle. Oh, I uh, sense of humour. I've got one of them. How else can you explain me signing Chick Charnley so many times? Of course, I'm out of football now, and uh, I can sum up how I feel about that in one word. Thank f Pigeons are much more reliable than footballers. Why? Well, for a start, they're more intelligent, and they do what they're tell. We're football players, no matter what you tell them, you're always guaranteed someday will make a verse of it. Am I right, Jim Leishman? Uh, Falkirk are homeless, 
Boo hoo hoo. Past the Kleenex tissue. They've got a new fanzine though. It's called The Big Issue. The proclaimers and other highbies say they'd walk 500 miles, but they wouldn't take a bus to straighten to go through new turnstiles. Is the Pope a Catholic? The ref a Mason? Does the Queen own a corgi? Just as sure as night follows day, the Jambos want to stay in Gorgie. When like your dreams the fish is battered and the chips are done, who's the man with a positive cheery smile? Why, it's we, Craigie Brun. You know, James, that was a lovely wee poem. Both my girlfriend and I like poetry. My favourite poem is The Charge of the Light Brigade by Tennyson and hers is a toss-up between Jack and Jill and Baba Black Sheep. But, you know, I may be down here in dark as Preston, but I still keep up to date with how the national side are doing through that wonderful email interweb thingy. And I really have to say, albeit grudgingly and through gritted teeth, well done, Hubert Votes. Thank you, whoever you are. Yes, it's true, a um, new generation of players now is coming through for Scotland. Um, we have got the good result against Germany, and that is good, um, not just for team, but for fans, and for me also, because it means I can look at the press gathered before me and say to them, get it right up you. Yeah, we all are Bonnie Senna. Sorry to interrupt you, Bertster. Big, big Rambo here. And I'm telling you, bud, let's not get carried away here. We've still to play the Germans again in their own Germany. And if there's one thing you would have to say about the German team, it would be cards on the table, chips in the oven. I could be wrong, I could be wrong, but I'm almost certain the majority of players in the team will be Germans. And not only that, they're probably good, good, great, great personal fronts of myself. Did I ever tell you, I used to play for Bayern München. Anyway, sorry, but okay, put it this way, I have to say it, I still think the man for the Scotland job is Arnold Schwarzenegger. But, feeling that, I'd go for Walter Smith. Well, obviously, you know, but certainly at the present moment. You know, I'm not directly involved with football, but, you know, I, I have plenty of experience. Many highs, many lows. But I would have to say, you know, last season was my toughest ever. And uh, if I had to, to live it all again, then, you know, obviously, I would say no to doing all those lunchtime sports scenes with Dougie Vipon. Thanks, Walter. Great stuff. Hi, Voogie Diepond here. Sorry, do apologise. Doogie Viepond here saying, welcome to Munchtime Sports Scene, where it's time for another one of those regular sucking up an ex-Ranger features. And this week, it's Graham Souness. Can I just say something here? Yeah, for sure. I've been listening to what's been said here. And I'd just like to say that I think taking the piss out of our esteemed Scottish football personalities is morally wrong. Surely just kicking them would be much funnier. And yeah, for sure, we've signed up Lorenzo Amoruso from Rangers. I have to say, I had heard a lot about Lorenzo, and that's why I personally attended his medical, just to see if he measured up. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm off to send a sympathy card to Martin O'Neill. I still say he was lucky to beat us. Honestly, in all honesty, seriously, no, really, I, I, I mean it, I, I, I really do, make no mistake. Apart from losing the CIS Cup final to Rangers, going out of the Scottish Cup to Inverness, losing the championship in goal difference, and the UEFA Cup final defeat in Seville, last season was an astonishingly brilliant season for Celtic. And I, I can't believe it's time to start it all again. It just seems like yesterday I was berating officials, accusing the SPL of bias, and calling the Porter players a, 
a bunch of cheating so-and-sos. Actually, when I think about it, it was yesterday I was saying that. How time flies when you're agonizing. But no, hey, listen, no, hey, a new season, a new beginning, and mark my words, changes will most definitely be made. The first one being getting rid of the, the paranoia around Celtic Park. Paranoia, no more. There's no place for it. It has to go. It is gone. So, sorry, what was that? Was there something going on behind my back? Who was it? The SPL? The Masons? Alex McLeish? It'll be difficult. We've lost some top quality players. And Jerome Bonicell. Some of the older players and staff were delighted by my first signing. They were all saying it would be great now that they would get lots of free ice cream. I can tell you, they were quite disappointed when I had to point out that I'd signed Mr Capuccio and not Mr Capucci. But Celtic will be up for it this year, particularly Paul Lambert. No, seriously, my, my legs are not away. In fact, I'm stoning them right now and they feel no bad, so hopefully I'll get plenty of use of them in the new season because, you know, legs are quite handy when it comes to, to running and, and kicking a ball and that. So, fingers crossed and, and toes crossed as well that this season we can do the same as last season, only different because we were, we were pure and lucky last season, so we were. And a, a lot of Celtic fans are still wondering if there was any jiggery pokery going on at Ibrox in the, the last day of the season, but I don't suppose Barry Ferguson is all that mad keen to tell us. The infirmal in line down at Ibrox? Nah, I can remember that game, and they won the line down. They were definitely stunning up. One thing's for sure though, it'll be tough this season because we've lost some special players like Arthur Newman. I'll miss his overlapping runs. And Lorenzo Amoruso. I'll miss him being a big fud. And of course, we've also lost him out uh, of help. It's the hair bear bunch, Dan Egan. I should be better this season though, because all last season I had a sore pelvic. And some folk have been saying to me, Oh, Barry boy, what's a sore pelvic like? Well, I'm telling you man, see a looping pelvic? It's worse than a sore arse. <laughs> Gone yourself, Barry son. Totally ranger sational. So, another highly open and competitive season gets underway. And the big question is, which half of the old firm will win everything? Will it be the gloriously magnificent Glasgow Rangers? The Jairs? The utterly superb Teddy Bears? Or will it be them? Speaking as a neutral, I'm telling... Thanks, Chico. Well, that's it. This wee excuse for a dribble round Scottish football is all over. But if you want to find out more about what the Only An Excuse team are up to throughout the season, check out their website at www.onlyanexcuse.com. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm away for a wee lie down. 